So hello everyone, it's Katie from Starlight and I thought I'd make this video uh, to give people a lesson in manifesting because we manifested, me and Kath manifested a car last month and it was a really really big manifestation especially for me and my guides keep saying that Really, what Ascension is about is about learning to manifest completely consciously as opposed to consciously and subconsciously, which is what we're doing at the moment. And I have spent years and years and years of my life learning to manifest. And I have to say, I am actually pretty good at instant manifestation. You know, if I need an eyeliner or a car park space or something that I'm totally unattached to, I'm pretty good at, at, at manifesting that and there's loads, there's so much information about how you do that but actually manifesting bigger stuff, manifesting stuff that we're emotionally invested in is a totally different manifesting journey and a totally different manifesting story, manifesting your big dreams, manifesting um, big things like a car. Uh, which for me was a really big thing because I was so emotionally invested in it. And so I thought I would tell you the story and use it as a, a an example and a lesson in manifesting. So over a year ago, over about a year and a half ago, I was having life coaching with the lovely Karen, who I run Magic Month with. And one of the questions she asked me was, what's the thing that Starlight needs most? And I instantly answered from my heart, a van and the reason I needed a van <laughs> was because Starlight is forever taking people to sacred sites that we have to recce. We then take groups to people to sacred sites to do these amazing light worker journeys and I am so blessed to have all these amazing tools for these light worker journeys that are so useful for the healing process and the light work, all sorts of cards and oils and uh, mega crystals and I, those of you that don't know but sacred sites in England do not have train stations they are hard to get to by public transport and I have spent four years dragging cases around pub on public transport on all sorts of coaches and taxis and railways and all sorts of things filled with crystals that are this heavy and cards and other things and it's just you know it, it it's been something that has been hard practically really really hard and every time we've done it we've been like oh my god we need a car um but we thought that we wanted a van <laughs> um and i think we will get a van eventually but a van was not going to be right for my first vehicle. I am a Londoner. I only passed my test when I was uh, 30. And in England, you cannot rent a car for two years after passing your test. So after passing my test, other than driving once in America in an automatic, I had not driven. And, um, uh, you know, a van, we live in Brighton, a van is a really hard thing to park, and parking is kind of my worst point as a driver. So firstly, I was manifesting something that was really, really hard for me to manifest. But actually, after I said that, that that's what I need, that's what I need for my, my growth, for the growth of my business, for the flow of my business, what happened was a big, big journey of clearing out what was in the way of me manifesting that van. And basically, I had, and I realized during the life coaching sessions that I was doing over this van, a massive fear of driving because I was somebody that was given lots of information from other people about how I drive. And, and how I, I was going to be as a driver. This is from years ago. This isn't my driving instructor. This is people, when I was 18, friends laughing at me, being like, you're going to be an awful driver. Or saying things like, you, driving. And all of that information had been absorbed 
by my subconscious. So even though I'd passed my test and I'm actually a really safe driver, I had this massive fear of driving on my own. I had this massive fear that I was going to kill people <laughs> once I drove. And so I did all of this healing work on this fear because the thing is you're not going to manifest a van, you're not going to manifest a vehicle, you're not going to manifest a car if you believe you're going to kill people in it. You're not going to manifest anything if you don't believe you're worthy of it. And I was not a worthy driver. And so I started working through and bringing up the subconscious. This wasn't stuff in my, sub, in my consciousness, but it was something that wasn't manifesting in my life. And so whenever something's not instantly manifesting, I'm like, okay, my consciousness is trying to vib vibrate this manifestation, but my subconscious is not working. And so I started working through my subconscious and I started to realize that I had this absolute, almost I would say a phobia of driving, this, be this belief that I'm gonna kill somebody that's a subconscious belief, very abstract belief, if I get behind the wheel, that I'm a terrible driver and, and I shouldn't be behind the wheel because that's what I've been told by people throughout my life and it had started to sink into my subconscious. So of course I'm not going to manifest a van because <laughs> we always put our safety and the safety of others before anything else. And that's why, for four years, I have been dragging heavy crystals to sacred sites in a suitcase, ruining lots of suitcases. And so, after several months of working on this, I actually got distracted because the van still wasn't showing up, and I got busy with other things and distracted. And then I was doing, running a manifestation course last eight last April um, and I was running it actually with Karen because we started running Magic Month and we decided to run this mini manifesting course and my guides said as an exercise on this course why don't you manifest this month but let your manifestation let your Dharma and your destiny tell you what you need to manifest so you're not deciding what you need to manifest you let your destiny tell you what you need to manifest. So, I uh, was doing the exercise with the group, and rather than deciding what I wanted to manifest, I was just listening and letting myself be told what I should manifest, which is a really, really powerful way of manifesting, especially manifesting the stuff that's still blocked, uh, that still needs work in your subconscious. And once again, this vehicle, it's now become a vehicle, comes up. And it was like, manifest the vehicle for this month. And so I did. And the vehicle didn't show up. The van didn't show up. But what did happen is by the... That was at the beginning of April. And by the end of April, we had our Ibiza journey, uh, which is a light work journey that we do in May. We had an Ibiza journey at the very first week of May. And the year before, we'd managed to manifest drivers and people that could drive for the group around the island. And we have to drive the group around the island because everything we do there is in, in portals and energetic temples on the island. You cannot get around Ibiza walking. Like There aren't even pavements. You have to be able to drive. By the end of April, by my birthday, on the 25th of April, we still didn't have a driver. And we had... We had one driver and kind of a, a second driver but we, we needed a third driver and we didn't have this third driver and I'm like well the journey's got to happen <laughs> there's no other way <laughs> it's got to happen everybody's booked on it everybody's paid for it and so I'm like fuck it I'm gonna drive and I don't even know where this came from probably from all of the fire uh, ceremony work we've been doing on the manifestations, in the manifestation course, we've been clearing out everything that was in the way. And suddenly, here is somebody who already knows that she's scared of driving, to saying, okay, I'm gonna drive. I, I'm gonna drive, not just myself, I'm gonna drive a group around Ibiza. How hard can it be? I know Ibiza. <laughs> and we rent this car for me in Ibiza, and I'm a bit nervous. I've only driven an automatic once before in America, two years before. And so I asked for an automatic, even though I learnt on a stick. 
Can I ask for an automatic? It's impossible for us to get a automatic. You have no idea the amount of prayers to Ganesha I had to do to get that automatic. Nobody's selling us an automatic because I'm still not uh, two years on my license because I'm still because uh, I don't own a credit card because I don't believe in debt and they'll only sell you an automatic because of a uh, um, if you've got a credit card. And then this crazy company called Indigo Cards, which is so funny because I'm an Indigo and we do so much Indigo light work, emails us, emails Starlight and is like, yeah, we're a company dedicated to helping people get cars in Ibiza when they're normally rejected. <laughs> And so they sort out an automatic for us. And I'm driving an automatic with the group around Ibiza. This was so hard for me. Ibiza is... The journey is amazing. It's so beautiful. It's so magical. It's so empowering. And, and strong and wonderful and crazy and interdimensional. But it, like all starlight journeys... It also has this Kali energy to it, where you, 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 your higher self knows that you're in a place that you can do deep subconscious healing. And so your higher self is going to bring up all of your shadow and make you face what is in the way of your empowerment, what is in the way of who you are meant to be, because you're able to heal it in that situation. And so people get triggered in ceremony, they get triggered just by life things happening during that week. And it's so empowering and so worth doing, but it's also hard at the time. And for me, I'm driving this car around Ibiza and I actually can forgotten how to drive. And I'm so freaked out and all of this fear is coming up. And I haven't really forgotten how to drive, but all of my subconscious fear about driving and not being able to drive is coming up. And the car is triggering me, and it's triggering me on such a big level. It's not just triggering me about driving, it's triggering me about um, responsibility, and it's triggering uh, the thing that I was there to heal in Ibiza personally that year, which was that I, in my spiritual life I was being so strong and so empowered, and I was being so empowered, and yet my third dimensional life I was being so disempowered. So energetically working through a portal and, and facing my own uh, consciousness and all of that, I, was, I, I had spent years of my life dedicated to it and I was really good at being empowered and I was talking about empowerment. And yet I get behind the wheel of the car and I, I'm falling apart because it's not spiritual, because it's not energetic, because it's not my safe place. And so that triggering brought up even more of the consciousness that was in the way of my car and actually in the way of me manifesting this fifth dimensional life that I want to lead. And so it was deeply, deeply uh, healing for me, that whole experience. And after my big kind of crying, ah, I'm so disempowered moment on the beach with Goddess Tanit one-on-one, -on -one. I had this massive kind of healing and my driving started to get better because I'd cleared all of that out. I'd admitted it. The thing about your subconscious and when you're manifesting from your subconscious, and I was because this car wasn't showing up even though I'd asked for it in my consciousness, is it's stuff you don't see, it's stuff you don't necessarily know is there and so you need to be triggered to be able to see it, to be able to heal it. And so I heal all of that. By the end, I am actually driving really confidently around Ibiza and, and, and I'm actually starting to enjoy driving for the first time in my life. I'm like, hey, this is quite fun. This is a really nice place to drive around. But that was an automatic car. <laughs> so then the, I'm still manifesting this car or this van or these wheels for Starlight and it's still not showing up. And by the end of the year, once again, Starlight puts us through a journey where we do not have a driver. We, we have not found somebody that can be a driver. And actually by this point I don't really want somebody else because I don't want to, I want to be in charge of when the driving is happening and I don't, I don't want to be um, 
asking favours of people and stuff like that when it's Starlight's responsibility. So I've shifted once again in, the, in how I see driving and I'm starting to take responsibility. And this time we decide to rent a car for the Avery journey and to rent a, a car with a, a stick, a manual car, which I haven't driven since my test. And of course, once again, I get in the car and it completely triggers me all over again because it's a stick and because it's a new car. And I have this kind of final meltdown around driving. But what had happened is I'd just been doing this course called the Five Elements of the Soul course, um, where really we were looking throughout the whole course, the five week course, how the elements play out in our own lives and how, how the shadow of the elements play out. And actually, we'd been looking at like where anxiety comes from, or from an elemental perspective and what the medicine for anxiety is. For example, anxiety is too much air and the medicine for too much air is earth, it's grounding. We'd also been looking at um, mania, which was also coming up. Anxiety and mania were coming up in my fire, I I in my driving. And, and mania is too much fire, which is one of my comfort zones as an element. And so I was being very manic still when I was driving. And the medicine for that is breath. It's, it's bringing um, not shadow of air, but consciousness of air and breathing and bringing yourself back into the present and so I had all these amazing tools that I had just been given and I'm driving around a park car park on Brighton Seafront trying to get used to this car that I know I have to drive to Avebury the next morning because there's a group of people waiting for me and suddenly I remember the elements course and I remember all these amazing tools that my guides have given and suddenly I can align myself and actually take control of myself, take control of what is being given, transcend, transcend what is being triggered, and take control of this car. And the most amazing thing about it is both times I'd been put in a situation where I had to drive for my path. And the amazing thing about your path is you will do it, no matter how scared, no matter how stressed, no matter how much you're being triggered, you're showing up for your path, you're showing up for your destiny. And, and so I was, you know, I couldn't back out. And I drove to Avebury and I drove really well because suddenly I had all of these tools that I had been working on, all of this healing that I had working on was actually finally coming in and showing up in the third dimension for me. I wasn't driving wobbly like I was in Ibiza. I was driving really well. From Avebury, we went on to Shropshire, and on the way back, we were meant to stop in Bristol at a friend's. They cancelled because of a uh, Christmas thing that happened, which, on another note, just reminds me of something amazing that my guide said, which is that, um, at, you know, your families are really there to show you your shadow. And they were like, Christmas is a shadow party. And so my friends had had a shadow party at Christmas, <laughs> and they cancelled. And... Um, it meant that we had to drive all the way from Shropshire to Brighton. That's a massive drive for somebody that a year before had never faked, we'd never, not, not a chance, not a chance. And so we drive from Shropshire to Brighton. It takes us eight hours because it's Christmas traffic and all of this stuff. I'm learning all sorts of lessons about driving, but we do it. And suddenly I am worthy of a car. And do you know what? my manifestation changed. Suddenly I'm like, I don't want a van. I don't want to be f trying to park a van. I still don't like parking. I want to uh, have a car that I can learn how to park in Brighton. I want to have a car that can go outside of the country and be really good for the city. And because I'd, because I'd lived it in the third dimension, I'm now manifesting from a much more practical place of what is right for Starlight and what is right for me. And then what happens is we go uh, away to Italy for one night because of our flight uh, and then to Tokyo to teach and then uh, on holiday to Thailand. And in Italy we saw an eagle 
And then in Japan, we kept seeing eagles and hawks. And then nearly every day in Thailand, we saw eagles and hawks. And me and Kath, we notice what is repeated to us. And we just, we just decided that every time we saw a hawk or an eagle, we were going to manifest. We were going to manifest. We were going to use it to manifest. And so one day we see the, the eagle and we're manifesting. We're like, I know, let's manifest our car. And so this time we've decided we want a much smaller car. We actually want a chimney. We want, and we start manifesting in so much detail because we know what we want. We want to be able to bring the roof down and we want it to be really safe to drive and really comfortable to drive. And we're, we're manifesting in so much detail because of all of the experiences we've had. And we're actually starting to do a proper manifestation. What happens is we get back to the UK. We now we have been provided for with the money for a car, and we buy a car. We buy our Jimmy, and and Kath's so amazing. Like she just gets this gut instinct when she knows something is ours, and she sees this Jimmy, and she's like, "That's our car. That's our car. It's got low mileage. It's black. It's got everything we asked for. It's got the roof. That's our car." And so we manifest it, and we buy it, and then we pick it up, and we drive it home, and as I'm driving it, I'm calm, but I'm like, this car is really hard to drive, it's really, really awkward to drive, and I can't get biting point, and, and I thought it was me not understanding the car. And then we take it out of the city that we bought it from, and basically, the car breaks down <laughs> on the way home because it's just not picking up speed. And Kath's trying to drive it, I'm trying to drive it. We're like, okay, we have to pull up in this street. Fortunately, we pull up in this street and there is a man that uh, uh, has seen us and he comes to help us and he checks the car out and he's like, this car's... swears. And, and you've really bought a dodgy car. But me and Kath have, have done a lot of manifesting in our time. And we've lived in flow through so many amazing things. And we're just like, mm, I don't, this feels like our car. And we stay calm. We don't panic. We don't flap, even though we've just paid for a car that is not working. And part of the reason we're staying calm is because when we bought the car, on the air freshener that was hanging from the mirror was a picture of a hawk, and that's what of, a, of an eagle, and that is what we had been using to manifest this car. So we're like, feels like a sign to us. Feels like something is is, is flowing in our favor, and we have learned, especially through starlight journeys, that often when you manifest, you don't get what you want. You get what you need, and what you need gets you what you want. And so this car breaking down, we have decided, is something that we need. And we call the guy that sold it to us, and he's lovely, and he's just like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry, I, I had no idea. Take it to a mechanic, and I'll pay for it to find out what the mechanic says. And so a tow truck picks up our car and takes it to a mechanic, and the mechanic's like, clutch is gone clutch is completely gone on the car um, and we tell the guy that sold it to us and even though the guy doesn't have to do this because it's our car now he's a really nice person and he's like look I, I'm just gonna get I'm just gonna pay for the new clutch and whatever else is needed to get this car up to scratch and so basically what we end up getting is a car with a brand new clutch and we manifested a car that was going to be safe to drive, that was going to be easy to drive, and that was definitely going to pass its MOT. And the, the old former owner paid for a service for everything. And this meant that we got the car, we manifested. And we got it because we asked for it. We got it because we'd done all of the inner work, all of the practical work, all of the stages to get there. And we knew what we needed to ask for, and so we got what we needed. To, what we needed. 
And we got it in a roundabout way because that is the, how the universe works. I really love the mantra, you get uh, what you need, not what you want. <laughs> but what you need gets you what you want. It just takes you off in a roundabout direction. And now we have a perfect car and it's amazing. And, it, and we have a car that's, that's worth so much more than what we paid for it because we know it's 100% safe, we know it's 100% it's working, it, it's so good to drive now. And I'm telling you this story because really when you're manifesting stuff that you are emotionally invested in, no. It's not going to be instant unless you can clear all of that emotional stuff instantly. But often when you're really emotionally man invested on so many levels, like it was with me, there was so much going on around driving. There were so many belief systems around driving. There were so many vibrational blocks around driving. It took time. It took taking each step at a time. It took rising to each challenge to get what I needed for the next thing. But ever since I started that manifesting journey, the universe has always provided me with what I need to get to the next stage of manifesting that car. And I know one day the van is going to come. I know that that, that is going to happen because it it's it's on my vision board, <laughs> it's part of my, my manifesting, but um, really you've got to be able to manifest in stages, you've got to be able to look at your subconscious, and you've got to be able to stay calm. If flow not flap is Starlight's new phase, and you know I'm so grateful to Starlight's journeys and to all the self work we've done, because it was truly amazing for us to have spent that much time and energy getting a car and for it to break down on the way home and we had no guarantee that we were going to be okay after spending all of that money and me and Kath were so calm and we were so just like fifth dimensional about it and just like yeah it's fine okay let's laugh about this and see what it means and why the universe is doing this to us knowing that it's going to be okay and that's what inner work does for you. That's what self-work does for you. And, yeah, when the point of this whole story is that when something is feeling like it's not working out, it is. Sometimes the universe is giving you what you need to work through in order to change your vibration, to match your vibration to what you want to manifest. And there are so many amazing techniques for clearing out your subconscious. So many. I've, I've listed some of them, like, like the Five Elements course, fire ceremonies. Alchemy is an amazing, amazing technique. And if you're in and around London, we've got an alchemy uh, weekend uh, that is t dedicated to alchemy techniques, which is so powerful for clearing out the subconsciousness at the moment and that is going to be over Easter, it's, it's dedicated to manifesting more money and more abundance in your life because Easter is really the time for resetting your abundance vibration. Um, and so, so work on your subconscious but also show up in, in your consciousness, take, take the steps and the challenges and, and allow yourself to be triggered because anything that's triggering and showing up in your consciousness is is a stepping stone to healing your subconscious to get you to the place where you can instantly manifest the car or the big dream or the new job or the big things that you can't just say okay I manifest if it doesn't show up instantly is because you've still got emotional and belief system investment in the old reality and that is the point that I am trying to give to you and it takes time but you know what that is part of the joy of being on this amazing planet is being on her time is not being instant and spirit but being in form and having the amazing beautiful challenges 
and the amazing alchemy processes and transformation journeys that, that give us our, our sense of self and our sense of empowerment and our sense of ascension and change. And I hope this video has been helpful to you. I hope you've enjoyed uh, laughing <laughs> at the incredible journey it's been uh, to getting a car. I will post a picture of the air freshener and the car underneath <laughs> this video. Um, we also, so we have the Alchemy Weekend and we also have a few spots left on the amazing, life-changing, multi-dimensional Ibiza journey. Uh, with Sila. So if you are called to that, if you're seeing lots of signs about following the sun, it's a pilgrimage to the ancient sun. So we'd love to have you if you're called. So much love, so much blessings, so much light to you all.